Last time we talked about the hop bifurcation, and that's one of the main ways that a cycle gets born out of a fixed point. But there are other bifurcations of periodic orbits. We're going to talk about those global bifurcations, or let's just say other bifurcations of periodic orbits, in particular limit cycles. Remember, limit cycles are isolated periodic orbits. The Hopf bifurcation is a local bifurcation. It happens in the neighborhood of a fixed point in the phase space. So it happens in a small location. And it's just one of four common ways that you could have uh, periodic orbits either being born or disappearing. The other three are global bifurcations. And this is in section 8.4 Strogatz. So the first one, it's a saddle node bifurcation of limit cycles. So we could call it maybe the saddle node birth or coalescence of limit cycles. And we've already looked at a kind of main illustration of this. What we looked at in a previous lecture, it was this thing that had an R to the fifth term. So when you write it in polar coordinates, it looks like this. And for theta dot, I'll just say theta dot is one plus br squared. So if you look at this, what this system does, the r dependence, at least the r vector field, you could view as a one-dimensional vector field that doesn't depend on theta. And so theta is just going to change somewhat uh, according to what b is. So we looked at this last time. If you look at what the R dot equation is you can pull out an overall R and then we have mu plus R squared minus R to the fourth. So it says that R equals zero is a fixed point. And then what's the other one? Well, if we say that, let's just define to make it easy, I'll call it X. Then um, we've got X squared minus X minus mu equals zero. That's what this other part gives us. And we could solve that for uh, uh, using the quadratic equation. So let's call these, we'll call the two solutions x plus and minus. And it's one half, one plus or minus square root one plus for mu. So the, the two points will coalesce when the thing inside the square root goes to zero. So x plus or minus uh, are equal when one plus four mu equals zero, or we'll call this mu critical. Actually, we'll call it mu s, actually sn, because it's like a saddle node. And so this is negative one fourth. And if you remember the plot we had last time that showed the kind of amplitude of the cycle as a function of uh, mu, uh, then what did we get? Well, I guess we should first plug in, what do we get at X plus or minus equals uh, R star squared, which is one half. So R star, at the saddle node is one over square root of two. And the main thing about that is just that, notice that it's order one. So if we were to plot the amplitude as a function of mu, we looked last time at the hop bifurcation that happened at zero. So maybe we would call that mu of hop. There's also this mu of the saddle node of limit cycles. So before that, we have that the, the origin is stable, right? And then it goes unstable, and we have this unstable branch of limit cycles that will then coalesce with a stable branch. So this is our R star equals one over square root of two. So we could look at it analytically. We could also look at what's the R dot vector field as we vary mu. And in some sense, it's kind of, it's pivoting about zero. So if we look at the 
um, mu less than this mu of the saddle node bifurcation and plot, what are we plotting? R dot versus R. Our curve will look like uh, it's something that's low and then it comes up a little bit, but then it goes down. And it means the, the origin is stable. I guess things go kind of slow right here and they're faster right there and fast approaching. And if we are at mu equals mu of the saddle node, that means this, it's like this curve has pivoted up a little bit enough so that this, the, the top of that curve intersects uh, r dot equals zero. So we get something like that. And we could plot this as a kind of half stable point. Things are approaching from one side and then leaving on the other side. The origin is still stable. And for mu greater than mu uh, of this saddle node, which, what did we say this was? This was negative one fourth. We could plot that as well. And at that point, the we're going past that bifurcation point. So now there'll be two fixed points. So we'll get that R dot curve intersecting in two points. One of them stable, and the other's unstable. Because if we were to draw the arrows of which way things are going, R dot is negative. Over here, R dot is positive, And then R dot is negative again. It kind of speeds up. And then origin is still stable till we get to this Hopf bifurcation. And then something will happen at the, the origin as well. Um, so I guess in all of these, we could put that the origin is, is stable. So the picture that we'll have in the phase space is that things are just spiraling in to the origin. For this case, it's like there is some kind of half stable cycle that shows up, which is a bit weird. It's that half stable cycle. So if you start on the inside of it, it's you're, it's it's unstable. So things are going in and spiraling into that fixed point. But from the outside, things are approaching it. So that's that's odd. It's a pretty fragile type of situation because if you change mu just a little bit, um, you'll get a different situation. But the main thing is you have a you have a periodic orbit sort of showing up out of nowhere, and it's not starting with a small amplitude and getting bigger. It it is born with an order one amplitude. So if we plot the case, what's happening after that? Now the the outside periodic uh, orbit or limit cycle is stable. So things are going onto it. And then there's this, I'll draw it as a dashed line, an unstable limit cycle where things are peeling off of as they go on to the stable limit cycle. And if you're on the inside of that unstable limit cycle, then you're again spiraling into the origin. We have the cycles show up with an order one amplitude and also order one period. We're gonna care a lot about the difference between the bifurcation parameter and the bifurcation value. So with respect to mu minus mu SN, let's just say the, the magnitude of that. And we'll, we're gonna be comparing how the amplitude and the period changes with respect to the distance from the bifurcation value for these three global bifurcations. So this is the first global bifurcation, right? It doesn't happen locally anywhere. It's happening, you know, out of nowhere, there's this limit cycle, actually a pair of limit cycles. So that's the first one. The second one, it's the infinite period bifurcation, but it's also given a, a longer name that's cool sounding sniper. So this is the saddle node infinite period bifurcation on a cycle. So S N I P E R sniper. And we can illustrate this with an example. The example here will be something we looked at before. We've got that. And then for the theta, we'll look at an example flow that we considered when we looked at flows on the circle. 
So if you remember theta dot equals omega minus sine theta, we examined this in an earlier lecture. I think uh, instead of minus sine theta, we put minus a. So we had a, another parameter. But let's consider this where omega is greater than zero. And what happens? This leads to r star equals zero and one. So there's a limit cycle at one. And what we care about is what do what happens in the theta direction. So along the limit cycle. So we could plot what theta dot looks like uh, for different cases of omega. Right, sine theta has an amplitude of one. So if we have omega here, and for this case, we'll plot omega greater than one, then uh, we'll just get, we get negative sine theta. So it doesn't quite touch theta dot equals zero. And this is going between, uh, this, this is theta, I haven't labeled that axis. We're going uh, from zero to two pi this slowest point is at about pi over two. And then this fastest point is at about three pi over two. So we might say uh, fast, sorry, this is slow, slow, fast. All right, things are moving quickly. And what does that look like in terms of the, the cycle? So we have a limit cycle. The origin is, is unstable. So things are leaving the origin and then going to this limit cycle. And what's happening along the limit cycle? Well, there's a part that's slow. This is the slow part. And then there's a part down here where things are moving in the theta direction very quickly. All right, so the slow is at pi over two, fast is at three pi over two, and that's for omega greater than one. Omega is our parameter here. When, you, when we lower omega so that it reaches one, you can see what, what, what's gonna happen there. At omega equals to one, this just barely touches. So the slow part becomes, it goes to a fixed point. I guess we could call this a half stable fixed point. And the picture will look like we've got this limit cycle that things are going to, but trajectories are going you know, very fast over here, but then they slow to a crawl. So this is a kind of uh, homoclinic orbit because if you start on this left side, then you will asymptotically go around the cycle and asymptote back to the point on the other side but it's a fragile situation, right? You change omega a little bit. You, have, uh, you make omega go a little bit below uh, one and the picture will change. So omega below one, we get that, oh, now there's two points. And we've got, um, what do we have here? Theta is uh, negative on this side, positive then positive, and then very, very fast over there again. So we've got an unstable point and a stable point that show up on what used to be a limit cycle, right? Where it's still, it's got amplitude one. So what's going on in that situation? We would have, uh, let me plot the, the cycle. We have a fixed point. So right, this the one fixed point that was up here now becomes two we have an unstable point and a stable point, right? And that's true for all those values of uh, theta. So it doesn't matter what my R is. So coming out of the origin, there is a line, another line, right? My theta won't change. So along there, I'll just be, my radius will just be increasing. And along here, again, my radius will just be increasing 
on the cycle, I've got some backwards flow. I, originally I was going clockwise, but it was slowing down at pi over two. But now I'm going backwards and things are going this way. They're still going pretty fast over here and then slowing down. And if we were to sketch what some of the other trajectories do, um, so this, this idea of the, the line of points is true for any value of R, um, but things are, for R greater than one, things are coming in. So if we were to sketch what's the face portrait near these, we have what looks like a saddle point and is a saddle point. And then over here, we have things just sort of going in um, to the point. Don't know exactly how they're approaching it. Things would have to kind of spiral out somehow. And it's kind of weird how things are moving. I've got R dot and then omega dot. And I've got omega starting above one. So I'm lowering below. So we start where it's just a limit cycle. And if I'm able to stop this, right, the critical value was mu equal to uh, one. And then for less than one, what we should see are these lines. And we, we do, you see a saddle point to the left, upper left, and then some other point, stable point that's on that uh, R equals one uh, radius of one circle. And they just sort of move further and further away from each other as we decrease below that parameter value. I think this was made in Mathematica. I don't really like how Mathematica does face portraits. <laughs> There's something that's just not aesthetically pleasing about it, but it's commonly used. So this is called infinite period because right at this bifurcation point, this, in some sense, cycle, it's, uh, we've created a, a homoclinic uh, orbit, so it has an infinite period. So the period goes from something that's not infinite, maybe large, to infinite. In fact, it's, it's worth looking at this case up here, uh, where omega is greater than one, and thinking about what we would see um, if we were to follow the phase space, a follow phase space trajectory. So this is, let me show this. So omega critical is equal to one. If we're at omega uh, greater than omega critical, we've got this case where things are uh, slow, right? Down here, they're fast. We often think of this in polar coordinates, but if we actually looked at it in terms of x, what is x doing? And plot x as a function of time, what would we get? So this is x. And so on the cycle, x is going to go between uh, 1 and negative 1. And here's time. What will we get? If we start over here, we'll kind of flow, we're starting at positive one. This thing will quickly, because we're kind of going off of the fast side and then slow down a lot. So this will go down to zero and then very, very slowly cross over to the other side. And then it'll speed up as we get to negative one and it's still going really fast as we go past through negative one. And we're going really fast, super fast, get back to one again, and then the cycle repeats. Looking at this, what does it look like? Any thoughts on what this looks like? Heartbeat? Yeah, yeah, so there's actually models of and cardiac muscle that look a lot like this. And so that's why this is an important bifurcation because of its biological significance. It looks like a heartbeat and also nerves firing, which I think underlies heartbeat. So that, that that's kind of cool. 
and you get that just qualitatively. So that's before the bifurcation. I would imagine in this case, if it's a heartbeat, you do not want to pass through that homoclinic orbit state. It'd be a flat line. This was qualitative. We could try to get more quantitative and estimate the period. We already did this in an earlier lecture. From earlier, if you remember, we could get the period for omega above omega critical. In this case, omega critical is one. We got this from integrating zero to two pi of, we just sort of rewrote the equation. This is d theta omega minus sine theta. But what we found is that this was two pi over square root omega squared minus one, which you could also write this as two pi square root omega plus one uh, times omega minus one. And omega plus one is close to two. So I'll define mu as omega minus omega C. So it's the, the distance of our parameter from the bifurcation parameter. Then T is approximately equal to two pi, and, and we're assuming this is small, two pi over square root of two, uh, one over square root omega minus one, two pi square root of two over one over square root mu. So in this case, the period goes as order mu to the negative one half. By design, how we've made it, the amplitude is order one. So here the it's the period that's most affected by, by mu. So mu, I'm gonna give a summary later. So this is the distance from the bifurcation point in the parameter. So the first one, uh, everything scaled as order one. It seemed to be independent of mu. Here, we've got the period scaling as mu to the negative one half. All right, so the next one, this is the homoclinic bifurcation. You might say, hold on, I thought we did, you just mentioned something with the homoclinic thing. This is a scenario where part of a limit cycle moves closer and closer to a saddle point. And then at the bifurcation, the cycle touches the saddle point and becomes a homoclinic orbit. So it's been called the homoclinic bifurcation. It's also known as the saddle loop. We really just have to do it numerically. If you were to write it out, it's not done in polar coordinates, interestingly. So this is y dot, uh, x dot equals y, y dot equals mu y plus x minus x squared plus x, y. You have to just compute it numerically, but there's a bifurcation, a homoclinic bifurcation at, we'll just call the critical value of mu. It's negative 0 0.8645, roughly. That's the value at which you have a homoclinic orbit. So if we were to plot what the face portrait looks like, we've got our typical x and y. There's a saddle, maybe I'll do that. It's a, open circle. There's a saddle at the origin with stable and unstable directions. So it's got stable and unstable manifolds. And for the critical value for mu equals mu c, we've got a, the right side, the unstable side matches up with the stable side. So if, if you want to think of it as it's what, what does the unstable manifold do, this branch of the unstable manifold of the saddle point, it connects back up with the saddle point. And then inside, we've got another fixed point, but it's unstable. For mu less than mu critical, so here's mu less than mu critical, which remember mu critical is already some negative number. Mu less than mu critical, we have a stable limit cycle that passes close to the saddle point. So if we were to kind of plot locally what's happening near that saddle point, it's a saddle point. And then we've got a, we have a limit cycle. As mu gets closer to mu critical, that cycle collides with the saddle point. They merge and go away, creates a homoclinic orbit. And then after that, for mu greater than mu critical, the cycle is destroyed. So mu greater than mu critical. Our saddle, the unstable manifold doesn't connect up. So you could really try to understand this in terms of just what is the right side branch of the unstable manifold doing? And then this part's 
maybe come in and like that. So they miss. So if you view it in reverse, a you could think of a, a cycle is born. Right. Again, we could look at a video. I'm increasing mu. So I'm starting at negative 1.2. Remember the bifurcation happens at about 0.8 something. So you can see it qualitatively changes. So far below mu critical, you can you can sort of see the saddle point and then thing an unstable manifold coming off the saddle point doesn't quite meet up anymore. Whereas at the beginning, it's sort of going in. So it's sort of odd, but this does happen. This is seen in some systems. It's not so easy to get at what the scaling is for this. It does have an amplitude that's of order one when it's born, which is it's big. And the period, we're talking about the cycle. Period scales, it's kind of odd, but it scales as the natural log of mu, where you know mu is. In this case, we're redefining mu to be the distance of, uh, maybe you call that mu bar. It's mu minus mu critical. So distance from the bifurcation. So that's the third one. We could summarize uh, for including the hop bifurcation, the universal behavior uh, bifurcations of cycles. So we're going to define, like before, mu is the distance from the bifurcation parameter value, and mu is we're saying much, much less than one. And we can compare the supercritical hop, the saddle node of cycles, the saddle node infinite period, or sniper, and then the homoclinic bifurcation. And over here, we'll put the amplitude of the stable cycle, because stable cycles are really what we care about. Those are the things that you would actually see. So how do these scale? We just care about how they scale, and then how the period of the cycle scales. So for the supercritical hop, the period, this was order one, but the size of it grew and if you remember, it grew as mu to the one half. For the saddle node, first one we talked about today, both the amplitude, right? The amplitude, it shows up out of nowhere with amplitude of order one, and the period is also order one. For sniper, the amplitude is order one, and the period grew because of that phase where things are really, really slow. The period goes as mu to the negative one half. So it's very large. And the homoclinic order one, amplitude and then strangely you know order natural log of mu magnitude of man, natural log of mu which for mu small again is very large so we're talking large periods here why is this useful if you were to do an experiment and you're able to change some parameter value or you're observing some phenomena and you see this scaling of a cycle a periodic motion repeating motion, then it tells you that underlying it, there has to be kind of one of these, in some sense, normal forms, one of these basic patterns of bifurcations of cycles. It may also tell you that as you change that parameter value beyond some certain threshold, you're not going to have a cycle anymore, and that could have important consequences. So having ideas of how about how things scale as a parameter scales, right? This is independent of you know, non-dimensionalization or anything. It's just how do things scale as a parameter changes? That's useful.